it's Matt. Thanks for joining in. I'd like to go ahead and go through a video on how to stack and edit images of Comet Neowise. A data set I captured at Craters of the Moon National Monument late last week. Captured 18 images and I'm going to stack those. So tonight we're going to need two pieces of software. Number one, PixInsight. I'm going to use that to align and stack my images. Second piece of software is going to be Adobe Photoshop. I love Photoshop because it allows me to create masks and layers and those two allow me to selectively enhance parts of the image and create a beautiful view without affecting the rest of the image. Awesome flexibility, so we're going to dive into it. All right, for these exposures, I ran with a 70 to 200 millimeter lens at f4. I did 60 second exposures. They were tracked ISO 2000, and I was using a Skywatcher Star Adventurer to keep the stars pinpoint, and the tracker allows us to take deeper images of the comet, and it keeps the stars pinpoint because it's canceling the Earth's rotation, which is really cool. All right, first up, I have the images opened in Adobe Bridge. It's just a photo viewing software, so whatever you choose, you can run with. But for these images, just blink through them, take a look, you see a satellite trail or meteor in a few of them. Looks like a satellite in that one. But I'm gonna use Sigma Clipping. It's a combination method in PixInsight or your stacking software of choice, and it should eliminate those random streaks of light. All right, let's jump into it in PixInsight now. So first up, we need to align the images, and to do that, we're gonna run with star align here, and we're going to open the files of Comet Neowise that we photographed. We're gonna to navigate to the folder, and we're gonna select the 17 different images. First, we'll pick the reference image and click OK. And then we will open all of the photos. And this will stack the images. And we'll save them to the same folder. All right, we're going to click Apply, and the images will align. It's going to take a handful of minutes for the computer to actually process all this. So we'll come back when everything is done. All right, awesome. Star alignment has successfully aligned 17 of our images. So next up, we need to take those aligned images and we need to open up the image integration menu. And the image integration is going to take all those aligned images and create one single stacked image. All right, we're gonna click the registered images which have the subheading as R for being registered, and we'll click open. Image integration method, I'm gonna run with average, will give us a nice solid signal to noise ratio. And pixel rejection, this is what I was talking about before, with any bright streaks such as satellites or meteors, I'm gonna run with sigma clipping, and that should eliminate those. I'm gonna click apply and let it run. This will also take a little bit of time for the computer, so we'll come back as soon as that's finished. Alrighty, excellent. So we have our integrated photo, and from here, we want to take a look at the brightness of the image, so we can do a quick automatic stretch via the screen transfer function, and we'll open that up. Alright, we'll unlink. The RGB channels and we will do an auto stretch and that will allow the image to be relatively color balanced off the bat. All right you can see nice beautiful clean color balanced comet shot with pretty darn clean and minimal noise because we stacked 17 images so the stacking will reduce a lot of that color noise and shot noise that we see in the photos. Since we didn't do flat frames, there's a lot of vignetting in the image, but that's something that we will clean up in Photoshop. But first, let's go ahead, we'll reset the screen transfer function, 
and we need to apply the histogram transformation so we can have a stretched image to take into Photoshop. All right, so we can take the stretch and we can apply it to the integration image. And you can see that when you click the boosted image, it's gonna bring up an even brighter stretched photo, which looks pretty darn cool. It's gonna show off a lot more of the faint detail that we have there in the comment. All right, now to make these changes permanent, we will drag and drop that on to the histogram transformation bottom bar and we'll click reset on the screen transfer. And then now, all we have to do is take that histogram and we drag and drop it onto the integrated image and it's gonna permanently apply that stretch to the photograph. All right, great, now we have that fully stretched image. What we need to do now is we need to save it as a TIFF, which we'll be able to open up in Photoshop and we'll go down to TIFF and we'll save it back to that folder we were running and we will name it. And click Save. And I'm gonna turn it on uh, 16 bits for this, for Photoshop. And from here, we're done with PixInsight. Now we'll open up Photoshop and we'll open up our stacked 17 minute photo. A lot of vignetting because we didn't apply flat frames to the image. So it's pretty bare bones. So I'm gonna crop in to remove as much of that vignetting as possible. To open the crop tool, you can hit Control C on your keyboard if you're using Windows. And I'm just gonna move it around enough that we can get uh, enough of the tail in the photo and not bring in much of that vignetting that is on the edge. And we'll click OK, the check mark, when we're ready. All right, cool. So we have a fully cropped image that we're ready to work with. And what I'd like to do next is I'm actually going to remove a little bit more of the vignetting by going to the camera raw filter. Tab. And I'm going to go to the lens correction tab and play around with the vignetting. And you can kind of watch and see how if you increase it and decrease it, you can see decreasing obviously adds vignetting. Increasing to positive integer, you can see that it's actually removing some of that vignetting. So I'll put it to about here. That looks good. And click OK. All right, there you have it. So if you blink on and off for the history panel, you can see that you have vignetting being removed, which makes the image look just a little bit more balanced. I'm going to duplicate this first layer, which you can do by dragging and dropping to the bottom here. Or you can also click Control J on your keyboard with Windows and it'll duplicate a layer. I'm going to delete that layer that I just made, just as an example. All right, so the image is obviously very flat right now. Histogram is obviously stretched further to the right. So we need to add some contrast back into the image, which means shifting that histogram to the left, which is darker pixels. So there's a panel here that you likely see, this TK panel. This is an add-on to Photoshop, and it automatically lets you select different masks based on their tonal values, which is pretty cool. So. For me, I just want to darken some of the midtones, I think, and we'll try from there. So if we click that midtones 5, it's going to make that new adjustment layer. And it's picking just those midtone values, and we can from there make a curves layer and really change and reduce that and darken. So by clicking on the left-hand side of the graph, we can darken the image by lowering it. And you can see if obviously you bring it down way too much, you're gonna start clipping the darks, which isn't good. 
and opposite's true for the lights. If you start raising it up too high, you're gonna clip the lights, and obviously you can't recover that data once you clip it. So I'm just gonna bring this down and kind of put the darks to a, a little bit more neutral area here. All right, cool. So we add a little bit, but I still want to darken this area in the background to uh, pixel values, usually around uh, 30 is, is good, or a little bit darker depending on how much contrast we're trying to put to the image itself. And you can see that up in the info tab, the RGB brightness uh, pixel values there. You can see that that first little reduction in the darks allowed the sky brightness to be decreased, which is good. All right, so what I wanna do now is I'm just gonna open up the curves adjustment layer, which you can do via Control M on the keyboard, or you can go up and make a new adjustment layer yourself. But for this, if you hold Control and click at the same time, you can actually pick a value and apply that onto the curve itself here and that's gonna give us some flexibility. So I did that, and now I'm gonna just lower that down until I get the brightness in the background lowered enough that I like the contrast, which is looking much better. I'm gonna click OK and apply that, and blink that on and off. You can obviously see that the brightness value is changing a good bit for that background, which looks nice. All right. And I think what I wanna do is, I wanna actually increase the brightness of the comet itself, the tail, so I can do a, another curves adjustment and instead of decreasing, again, what I can do is I can raise the lights by increasing it and then decrease the darks again to add this little bit of contrast and that'll brighten things up a little bit. And I can flatten out that top of the curve and I'll kinda of retain a little bit of the core of the comet itself. Cool, that looks okay. I'm gonna click okay and apply. All right, looks good. I think from here, I'd like to add a little bit of saturation back into the image. So I'm gonna select those mid-tones and apply a new vibrance adjustment layer and go up and have properties and maybe just push in a little bit of vibrance and then saturation. You can see obviously you can push a lot in there and really start to show some of that color noise. But wow, that uh, ion tail really starts to pop. Okay, I think something like that color-wise looks okay. Next up, I want to select back that first layer I duplicated, and I wanna reduce some of this noise. You can see it's starting to get a lot more grainy because we stretch the image. So we'll go up to Camera Raw again, and we will reduce some of that noise via the Detail tab. And we'll reduce some of that color noise as well, increase the slider to the right. Another cool thing is with this detail in the comet here, we can add a little bit more pop to it, to some of that structure there. And the clarity really helps bring that in and shows you. So you can really just start seeing some of the structure coming out in that ion tail and within the main portion of the comet's tail. All right, so I think that something like that looks okay. Give some nice structure. And we'll click okay. To a levels layer, and if you wanna do a levels layer itself, you can go up to new adjustment layer in levels this is where all your adjustment layers can be added but with that tk panel you can just click the levels as well and it will automatically make that new adjustment layer for you i just want to brighten the overall image by let's see brighten it up a little bit 
and just take that slider on the right, which is your white point, and I just want to bring that in, and you can see that the brightness is starting to increase when you slide it towards the left there. All right. And you can see, obviously, the comet is you know, starting to get blown out. It's already at 255 out of 255, so it's saturated color-wise there and a little bit overexposed. But what we can do is with a mask, we can actually paint that out via clicking on the layer and we can take the brush tool by clicking Control B and go ahead and reduce the size of the brush and you select the black and you can paint onto that by clicking on the image and selecting the opacity that you would like and we can reduce the brightness as you see for that and just kind of really hone in how much brightness we want on that. All right, so for me, that looks pretty darn good. So one of the next things that I like doing to the image is duplicating it. And I name it small stars because what I like going through and doing is applying an action that's actually gonna reduce the brightness of these stars here and flatten the image first before we go ahead and do that. All right, so now we have duplicated the layer as well so we can make adjustments to the opacity and we'll click run on that make star smaller mask, which is just an action set that I bought many years ago and um, allows you to reduce some of the star brightness and change the feel of the image that way. I'm going to apply it one more time. And sometimes if you zoom in, you'll eventually start to see some artifacts around the stars, sometimes as, as black rings as the issues start to crop up. But they don't look too bad, so I'm gonna run this one more time and see how that looks. All right, you can see that that minimum filter um, technique has reduced the stars a good bit. If you blink that on and off, you can really start to see that the comet starts to become the focus of the image and not so much the stars themselves in the background, which is pretty cool. That ion tail really starts to pop as well. Now what it looks like I need to run a, another iteration of the noise reduction to lessen some of that color noise that we have coming into play. do that under the detail tab and we'll increase zoom and increase the luminance and color noise reduction all right something like that looks okay and we'll click okay All right, from here, I think might want to add on a little bit more vibrance and saturation to the image. So we'll just make a new layer for that and increase it just to taste. You can see there's a lot of green air glow and red air glow that night there in Idaho. All right, so we zoom in. The background is a little bit too dark for me. So I think I'm gonna raise the black point a little bit by making a new layer and raising the midpoint up a little bit. You can see that it's just brightening the overall darks in the image, which making it look a little bit more appealing instead of so dark. All right, from here, what I like to do is reduce the size of the image to four by six and 300 pixel per inch, just under the image size. And we'll do that and click okay. And there you have it a finished image that we have nice and small, easy to send to a phone so the files aren't too big and we can save that as a JPEG image for web viewing. You just change your file format to JPEG and give it a rename. Save that in the same folder. And click save.
but there you have it there's the finished product within just about 20 minutes of editing you have a beautiful stacked image of Comet Neowise that dark skies really help bring out some of that tail detail it's just spectacular to see but hopefully you enjoyed the learning experience and can apply some of those same techniques.